Okay. So we're going to go over a quick Ornament 8 patch today. And uh, what we got here, well, background noise is random Euro rack stuff actually being tri triggered by our first loop here. Um, but first we'll go back a little bit and uh, quick describe it. So Ornament 8, it's eight delay lines. So eight capacitors that fill up. This determines how, uh, how long it takes them to fill, as do the various ins and outs that can affect it. We have trigger lines, so we can build loops, and we can make these loops as complex as we need to, I guess. If we were to chain a bunch together, we could get like infinitely complex. But we're gonna keep it pretty simple today. You can see here that we have one and two, so module one, trigger out to module two and then back to one. We have these both in the up position and then you can see the pulsar out here which is meant to trigger the pulsar drums. I actually am using it to clock the error rack. So um, what we have here is the charge goes over and goes back. You can see this one is set to a longer delay time, whereas this fires you know, pretty instantaneously. It's very quick. It's, it's almost max. And um, I'm not going to mess with the values much for now because you'll see later it's pretty tough to get <laughs> things just right. All right. So start getting into things. We have our first loop. You can see our, our second loop is already there, but we'll get there when we get there. So you can actually see that if I switch these up, they will actually fire the triggers. If they're down, they still pass the information, but they won't actually fire their series. So for our purposes here, that doesn't matter, but um, you'll see here, we're gonna go First thing, get yourself some bass drum. And I'm gonna try and do this in a way that doesn't cover the triggers, or the trigger lights. All right, there we go, that's decent. Okay, so you can see where we're set. So now we have the trigger here from Pulsar with the gate signal being translated to a pulse or converted. And then we hit our trigger. We have a nice simple bass. Now, for the purposes of our patch, we're also going to want to put a hat on the same trigger. So we're going to go down to module 7, where I've set up our hi-hat. Well, you know, these can be organized however you want to. These lines are all completely separate, so you could have the loop run here to here, back to here, da da da. It gets really complicated really fast. Um, I'd suggest staying simple at first, to show you exactly how that can be translated soon. So, oh look, it looks like I accidentally hit play on the uh, on the base module too. So we have an arpeggio on the base module. So anyway, now we have the same trigger going out to the pulsar, or going out to the hi hat module, module seven. It's not on yet. But you see here, I've decided to go from the pulsar out to the 0.1 microfarad capacitor and then to the trigger because I think it sounds a little nicer. It seems like, like, a, like a louder transient, a little more noise. It's nice. So anyway, you can see for this patch, I have this all the way up. I'm just going to keep it there again. 
Here, I'll show you before. So we have. Now we're getting. You can see because this only fires every, you know, this is the main metronome pulse. Once we get beyond about half, all you get is a quicker pulse or like a quicker gait. And you can hear the difference. Pretty nice. Let's hear the difference in transient. So we have our bass. Okay. So that's our first loop. This loop does not change per se. I mean, sometimes there it seems like there's some crosstalk, I guess, between some of these lines. They're supposed to be smart pots that basically know what direction to send the, the voltage or whatever, I don't, I don't know. Anyway, sometimes you get variation, like for instance, if I were to send the CD out to the pulsar, it may actually affect the timing of this line if the ground is not set, something along those lines. These are things to look out for and you'll find it happening. The first time I set up the patch, I had the CV going direct to the ground, and when I unplugged or to the uh, output clock, the external, and when I unplugged the external, the whole rhythm changed. You know, that's just, uh, <laughs> it's just the way it goes. With, I guess, fully variable circuits. Anyway, so we're gonna bring this back. Cleaner. So then we will go over to our second loop. So loop two, you can see the output of module four and five, out five and four. So when we go ahead and turn that on, you'll see we have another loop. Now, though it's completely unrelated, with different swing, everything like that. We're gonna watch it work out. <laughs> so, first step, we get our hi hat going a little better. A little, a few more hits, because you see we're maxed out. We can't get any more than this. Okay, a little chaotic here. But yeah, sounds good. It's a repeating pattern. So this is just our two loops, different swings. You can hear our bass going straight, although the the straight, quote unquote, straight bass note is a little swung. You can see because of the fact that our main metronome here is kind of swung. I kind of, I mean, very. <laughs> and that's, that's for a reason. So, next thing I want to do, I want to get some snare involved. And I don't know, actually, I haven't tried this without the CV, but you can see we have our snare pulse converter set up, going right to the trigger. And I'm going to set up a, a uh, pass to module six. from module five. Now, it's very likely that this will not do anything here. Uh, oh, hopefully I didn't fuck it. Didn't mess that up too bad, oops. Okay, sounds good again. So 
So, another important thing here. When you change something, wait a few, maybe like one or two loops, three, four loops, you know, give it time. Sometimes you'll think that something's off, but it's just the delay lines catching up. You know, you'll have, it's electricity. Things are charged, things discharge. When you change something, it's, it's not necessarily gonna be consistent right away. So you can also fix that by hitting all the reset buttons, but that's like, meh. Anyway, we're gonna pass our extra triggers from loop B module five to module six, or snare module. So what that can, that's gonna do is, oof, you can see here that the capacitance of this cell, I guess is lower, or it fills faster, I believe. This is a quicker fill time than this. So, In some cases, this will receive triggers that it can't actually trigger, in which case it will send those out through the pass. We're gonna use this to trigger a snare. Okay, it worked, cool. Now what I'm wondering is why this trigger light is blinking like this. Don't know why, but you know, everything sounds good so far. So, we have our, we have a bass groove. It's nothing great. Let's turn, uh, let's turn our other stuff down. All right, yeah. the snare a little bit. I like this because it rotates a little bit. Well, it will in a second. All right, so final step here. Here's where we're gonna get our variation and hopefully this just syncs up right away. We're gonna take our CV from here, module one, which note is a longer delay. It takes longer to fill. So this is important to this having any effect as I'll show after we, after we get the main groove and you know, we find something that works nice. We listen to it for a little bit. Then, then I'll mess with it and show you how quickly things go to insanity. All right, anyway, so we're taking module one, sending it to module four. What that's going to do is while this cell is filling, the CV here will ramp up and it will send it to this, which will change the fill time, delay time, what have you, of this cell. So we'll get a little variation in this swing based on this swing. That's more or less what you're looking at. I'm ready? Oh, and there it is. That easy. Ooh. See that again? Like this is, this is a rhythm. It's a rhythm. Ooh. Hmm. There we go. And now we have our swing and triplet ride. So, what you see there is the kind of, I guess, 
interesting stuff you can find. Whoop. And we'll turn the other shit back on. Not feeling too grooving. <laughs> this is feeling very grooving. So anyway, recap real quick. We have loop A, loop B. From loop A, we're sending our loop A module two, sending out a hi hat trigger and a bass trigger. And you'll notice the bass. Boom, do, 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 do. They're always hitting. All right. We have loop two. Another two, two module loop, four and five. But module four is being variably modified by this CB from module one here. And we have the pass through of the extra trigs on module five playing our snare. Borders between, I don't know, basically sometimes with more simple setups you get a wide range with no variation just because at maybe like, you know, 12 o'clock the capacitance delay is maxed out. It's, it's getting all the triggers, it's not going to go higher. So you can see, so it goes higher there. And now it's getting all the same triggers as the. I have there. Oh, see, you can see the bleed through there. Okay, so the bass really should just be doing that. And you see it's not. We're getting some crossover. Anyway, it sounds great, but things like that you gotta look out for because this is a trigger output. It should not be inputting information from here. There. Unfortunately, it does, but hey. Anyway, so here's an interesting way to look at it too. You can see if we make this longer, you can watch how the CV actually affects it. See, it speeds up. So. You have to find the right place. back in the groove and then we can make it like a little slower but that takes out our snare because of the pass throw interesting you can see it's very little the swing. There's a really small range for this one. That 
that's nice. Anyway, it's a lot of information. We'll see if I even did a good job describing it. Uh, last minute, I know you'll notice for now all these are up. Okay, so, like you saw, flipping the middle. We'll cut out the, uh, basically the, the trigger to the outlet. So I'll show you. You can see here, nothing changed. These are fine, but this is simply a trigger out of its external outputs, but they're all whatever outputs you want, but the pulsar and live outputs. So base off, all right, so the other thing to do is invert the pattern, not specifically invert the pattern, but invert the response exactly. See with this, it doesn't do anything. With the bass, now the bass is all off. It sounds terrible. And the snare could be better, but. While we were getting, if you watch the light, oh, whoops, if you watch the lights specifically, this is important. These lights are pretty good. You can see that it actually triggers quicker. It's a much quicker release here. So while the rhythm is exactly the same, Kind of opened up a bit, but I like up better. play it and I miss. <laughs> Alright, anyway. Play me out, ornament. 